This week's episode of our show is sponsored by HeroForge. HeroForge lets you design fully customizable miniatures for your role-playing game characters. Using their web-based 3D character building platform, you can fully customize your character's appearance, choosing from hundreds of weapons, armor, and equipment, then positioning them in a dramatic pose. Using their web-based 3D character building platform, you can customize every element of your miniature, choosing the perfect equipment, magical effects, weapons, armor, and every other element of their appearance from their face, their pose, their hairstyle, and much, much more. We love having a special, completely unique miniature which matches our vision for our characters. HeroForge has endless options for any class or character you can imagine. The miniatures are finely detailed, durable, and an absolute joy to paint. You can even download the digital STL files to print them out using your own 3D printer at home, or you can custom order them in your favorite material and they're shipped right to your door. You can start creating the perfect miniature for your next character at HeroForge.com. And you can get $5 off your first premium plastic miniature with the discount code Dungeon Dudes. And now, on to this week's episode. Greetings! My name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos every Thursday, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Today, we are taking an in-depth look at how to play a blaster mage in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. In the worlds of Dungeons & Dragons, being able to blast your enemies with fire and lightning and ice and just channel all of the elemental rage onto them on the battlefield is some of the most fun that people can have playing the game. And a lot of new players are steered towards this type of play style for the sole idea of being able to wreak that much havoc on the battlefield. There are many different classes, subclasses, spells, feats, and other character options to consider when building a blaster mage in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Today, we're going to break down the best and worst and talk about our tips, tricks, and strategies for smiting your enemy's ruins upon the mountainside with your arcane might. Let's get rolling. When we think of a blaster mage, there are three core classes that come to mind, and that is going to be the wizard, the sorcerer, or the warlock. All three of these have potent spellcasting abilities that really lend themselves well to a blaster archetype. Well, the sorcerer, warlock, and wizard are perhaps the most iconic and strongest contenders for your blaster mage. There are possibilities for playing a blaster using a cleric, a druid, an artificer, and even a bard. Well, today we're going to focus on the Sorcerer, Warlock, and Wizard for our breakdown as we build a Blaster Mage. You could apply some of these ideas, particularly the spell choices, to these other classes to build an off-type Blaster Mage with another class. When we look at the Wizard, Sorcerer, and Warlock, there are a number of similarities between some of the spell options they may get and some of the ways that they might use these spells. But there's also a lot of differences, and each of these classes comes with pros and cons towards making them an amazing Blaster Mage. So let's go over each one and talk about the different pros and cons so that you can pick the one that's best for you. Let's start off by taking a look at the Wizard, who has a wealth of subclasses to choose from across the Player's Handbook, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, and the other source books in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. But perhaps no option is more iconic for the Blaster Mage than the Evoker, the School of Evocation Wizard who loads up on the classic damage-dealing spells. Before we even jump into choosing the evocation subclass, when we look at the wizard on its own, it is one of the most versatile spellcasters in the game with the widest range of spells to choose from. This means that you're already choosing an option that has such a wealth of versatility packed into it that you can really customize your blaster mage to fit into many different categories and help out in many different ways. This is perhaps the biggest strength of the wizard as a blaster. The wizards have the ability to pivot in the ways that the other classes like sorcerers and warlocks do not. If your wizard is preparing for an assault against a red dragon, you don't have to bring those fire spells today because you can prepare different ones. If damage isn't even going to be the name of the game that wins you the fight, a wizard can bring that versatility, bring that flexibility, and still be able to bring the pain when they need to. 
really, when we look at the wizard, they have such a versatile range of spells that instead of just being a straight up blaster, you can really build this archetype of a blaster controller who can be versatile and useful in any combat encounter that you run into. This is especially aided by the Evoker Wizard's Sculpt Spells ability, which means that they don't have to worry about their allies being in the area of their blast spells and really feel like you can shape that battlefield around your offensive magic. The downside of the Evoker Wizard is that the abilities that actually add to the damage of your spells, namely Empowered Evocations and Overchannel, don't come online until very high level. And aside from being able to overchannel a Fireball or Cone of Cold, Empowered Evocations doesn't really add all that much extra damage to your spells, only adding your intelligence modifier once to the damage of your spells. You can deal a lot of damage as a wizard, particularly with the School of Evocation, in a pinch, but ultimately the wizard's biggest strength remains in that versatility, being able to add the damage when it is needed, but then bring in other useful spells such as teleportation or battlefield control spells to augment the evolving situation. If you're really looking for the highest amount of damage you can possibly deal, the wizard is not going to be the best choice. And that's where we come to the next class option, which is the sorcerer. The sorcerer doesn't get as versatile of a spell list as the wizard, but they have a little special feature called meta magic that opens up a whole world of possibilities for you blaster mages out there. The Sorcerer's meta magic options, particularly Empowered Spell, Twin Spell, and Quicken Spell, allow them to spike their damage by stacking on lots of extra dice, re-rolling dice, and even adding on more spells and more targets to their spells. Empowered Evocation allows sorcerers to spend one sorcery point when they cast a damaging spell to re-roll a number of dice equal to their Charisma modifier and use those dice for the damage of the spell instead of the original rolls. Empowered Spell is very, very flexible because you don't have to choose to use it until you've seen the damage roll and you only need to re-roll the damage rolls that came up poorly, like those ones and twos. You get to keep the sixes and the five, six, sevens, and eights that you roll on the big dice. The one sorcery point cost means that Empowered Spell is very efficient. A Blaster Sorcerer could apply this to over half the spells that they are able to cast over the course of a day. And then if we look at a meta magic feature like Quicken Spell, this can actually allow you to use this feature to cast that spell you wanted to blast people with and then throw a cantrip on top of that. Keep in mind that you can't cast two spells on a turn with the Quicken Spell feature. You can switch a spell with a casting time of one action into a bonus action, therefore using your action to cast a cantrip or perform another task. This still does mean that the sorcerer can do a little bit Bit more on their turn with the right spells in play. One of my favorite ways to get a lot of mileage out of an ability like Quicken Spell is to cast a spell such as Sunbeam, which when you cast the spell, the spell deals damage. But then as long as the spell is in effect, you can also use your action to fire another Sunbeam again. A Quicken Sunbeam actually allows you to fire those beams twice in one turn for a lot of damage. So as a sorcerer, you want to be on the lookout for spells that allow you to use your action to deal more damage again, because you can quicken these and use their effects twice in one turn. Lastly, we come to the Twin Spell option, which is a really great meta magic for sorcerers and allows you to take a spell that usually only targets one person and allow you to cast it at two different targets at the same time. Now, although Twin Disintegrate might be the choice that you first look at here, especially if you're playing a Blaster Mage, it is running a little bit of a risk-reward scenario. If you don't think Blasting is going to be your best option, Twin Haste can end a lot of combat encounters. Not quite Blasty, but still a very useful tactic. That's something that you always have to bear in mind with a Sorcerer, is that it's very easy to over-specialize as a Sorcerer, particularly if you are a Dragon Soul Sorcerer and load up on a bunch of elemental spells of one type, particularly you Fire Dragon Sorcerers out there. But then you run into a real big problem when you run into Fire Elementals, Red Dragons, and Devils who are immune to the damage of most of your spells. If you are loading up on those Fire Damage spells, make sure that you bring a spell that does Cold Damage or Electrical damage just so that you have that little bit of flexibility when you run into a dangerous situation. 
Another downside to the Sorcerer is that they do have a much more restricted spell list, and you aren't going to have nearly as many spells as the Wizard. The meta magic is going to lend itself really well to you being able to peak the damage at certain intervals in combat. Or if you take something like the Divine Soul Sorcerer, you actually are going to expand upon that spell list, and you can pick up some of the great cleric spells that actually benefit a blaster archetype really, really well. With spells like Spiritual Weapon, Weapons and Spirit Guardians. Both Spirit Guardians and Spiritual Weapon are excellent augmentations of the Sorcerer's Arsenal, and I really love the Divine Soul Sorcerer as a blaster archetype because I find that this really takes off the edge of over-specialization because you're adding spells that deal radiant, necrotic, and force damage, all damage types which are very rarely resisted by enemies. Overall, while the Sorcerer has a very restricted spell list, intelligent use of the Sorcerer's meta magic features like Empowered Spell, Twin Spell, and Quicken Spell can yield some very impressive damage, although it's very resource costly. This is the classic spellcaster Nova, and I have seen Sorcerers annihilate foes by stacking up their powerful spells along with their great meta magic options, and then end up with no gas in the tank afterwards. Now we come to our third class option, and let's not mince words here. If we're talking about the Warlock, you're probably here for Eldritch Blast. The Warlock, with their restricted number of spell slots, do have to rely on their cantrips to be a prominent blaster. Luckily, the Warlock has a bunch of features that can manipulate and change the way they use Eldritch Blast to really become a powerhouse in combat. Hands down, Eldritch Blast is one of the best damage-dealing cantrips in the game. Making attack rolls and dealing force damage mean that this spell is such an efficient source of a lot of damage. And the Warlock's ability to augment the damage by adding their Charisma modifier through the invocation Agonizing Blast and tack on other effects to their Eldritch Blast through other invocations and spells mean that they can get really reliably high damage out of Eldritch Blast. The simple combination of Eldritch Blast, the Hex spell, and Agonizing Blast means that a 5th level Warlock has very respectable damage that they can deal all encounter long. Always remember that if you apply Hex to an enemy, that extra damage applies to every attack you make. This really lets you rack up the damage pretty quickly. Not only that, but if we do look at some of the other invocations, something like Repelling Blast, being able to pair that with the spells that you do drop can be really effective. One of the biggest downsides that I've had as a Warlock is when I drop an area of effect spells and then my enemies leave that area of effect. With only a limited amount of spell slots, I want that spell to have the most effect possible. If you add something like Repelling Blast and are just shooting your enemies back into the area of effect of the spells you've cast, now you're controlling the battlefield and killing all the enemies on it. One of my favorite spells to use for this purpose in the Warlock spell list is Hunger of Hadar. What a horrific area to keep knocking your enemies back into. But Pact of the Fiend Warlocks could also do this with Wall of Fire, or if you have other allies in your party that are creating damaging area of effect spells such as Cloud Kill, or you just happen to be around a cliff or precipice to knock somebody off of, don't underestimate how much damage using the environment with Eldritch Blast and Repelling Blast can cause. The downside to the Warlock is relatively obvious to most people who have played a Warlock before. You learn this very quickly that they do have a limited number of spells known and a limited number of spell slots. So you have to be very precise on when you're going to use these spells and get the most effect out of them. This is why you also do want to be on the lookout for other useful class features which let you pull in a little bit more damage. The Hexblade Warlock might not be the first option you think about when considering your patron, but Hexblade's curse works just as well with Eldritch Blast as it does for melee attacks with a packed weapon. So Warlocks do need to creatively use the abilities granted to them by their patron as well as their invocations to make the most of it. They're never going to be able to spike their damage in the same way that a sorcerer can and they're not going to have the flexibility and freedom of options that a wizard does. You really have to figure out how to make the most out of Eldritch Blast. So this does somewhat make the Blaster Warlock feel like a little bit of a one-trick pony. Now, one way to get around the downsides to the Sorcerer or the downsides to the Warlock is to play both of them. 
if you multi-class a warlock and sorcerer together, you're actually going to be able to use both meta magic and your Eldritch Blast really effectively together. We actually have a whole video talking about different multi-class options that we'll link right up here. Taking two or three levels of Warlock and combining the rest with Sorcerer works really, really well. And you can end up with this very potent damage dealing combination where you have the flexibility of meta magic and the increased number of spell slots from being a Sorcerer, as well as the dependability of Eldritch Blast. Now, these three options that we've discussed are the most prominent options for a Blaster Mage. But like we said before, you could take something like a Light or Tempest Domain Cleric or an Artillerist Artificer. Both of these classes have a lot of options to fill in a support role rather than a frontline Blaster, which is why if you want to play them, there are still good options and you should still look at the spells and options we've talked about, but they may not be as powerful at dishing out that spell damage as the three we just mentioned. The same is true for classes such as the Druid and the Bard as well, which can bring some very good damage dealing spells in both their respective cases. Bards can cherry pick from the best of them. But both of these classes have a lot of other utility and support options. And so going whole hog as a damage dealer with these classes might not actually be the best way to maximize and take full advantage of everything those classes have to offer. No matter which type of Blaster Mage you're going to be playing, there are a few feats that we may want to keep in mind when we're building our character. Warcaster, Spell Sniper, and Elemental Adept. I think Warcaster is essential for any Blaster Wizard. If you are not using your concentration as part of your toolkit as a damage dealer, you are cutting yourself off from a huge range of damage dealing capacities. Being able to set up a damaging area spell, as we said before, like Wall of Fire or Hunger of Hadar, or even bringing in a single target damage dealing spell like Big B's Hand or Hex, these add a lot to your damage. And if these spells go down, you're gonna lose a lot of your potential. With something like Spell Sniper, one thing to keep in mind when you're playing a Blaster Mage, mages tend to be squishy. Even though you're that frontline damage dealing mage, you still want to stay out of close range combat. Spell Sniper will allow you to add that distance onto your spells to get that range so that you can stay where it's safe and also add an extra cantrip so you wizards and sorcerers out there might be able to pick up Eldritch Blast as well. Finally, Elemental Adept is absolutely essential if you are going to build your Blaster Mage around fire damage. If you are building your Elemental Spellcaster around the other elements, particularly if you're a Warlock or Sorcerer that has a lot of Radiant, Force, and Psychic damage, you might not need to choose Elemental Adept, but I think if you are going with Fire or Cold and building your theme of your character around those damage types, this is pretty indispensable. Elemental Adept is not going to save you if your foes are immune to your favorite damage types, and I still don't think alone it's a substitute for making sure that you have some backup spells, but it will help bridge the gap in some situations. Before we dive into our options for spells that are really great for Blaster Mages, there is one key thing to keep in mind, and that is that as you are choosing your spells and as you level up, you're going to be unlocking more spell slots and you're going to be unlocking higher level spells. It may not be essential to keep your Blaster spells all the way up as you raise in the ranks. Chromatic Orb might be a great blaster spell at early levels, but as you get more and more options with higher level spell slots, you might want to drop Chromatic Orb for more utility or functional spells, leaving those blaster spells for the higher tiers that you're able to cast. You always want to be doing the most damage, so keep this in mind as we move forward. In general, when you're choosing spells for your blaster, I find it's really important to make sure that you have one one really good single target damaging spell, one really good spell to concentrate on, one really good area of effect spell, and one spell that lets you weaponize your bonus action in some way. Sometimes these options might overlap and you might find a spell that is a little bit of a Swiss army knife. When you are choosing spells for your blaster, if you have a whole bunch of single target damage dealing spells, you probably don't need all of them. If you've chosen every single area of effect fire damage spell, you might just be able to pare it down to just fireball. So you wanna think about the situations that you need to use your damage dealing spells in and make sure that you've covered 
all those cases before you start over specializing because it's really easy to do as a blaster to load up on too many spells that basically do the same thing. Now, when we get into our spell selections, the one thing to keep in mind is you want a cantrip that is a damage dealer that you can reliably fall back to if you're running short on spell slots or if it's not necessary for the combat. If you waste a fireball on an enemy that could have been killed by a firebolt, that is a huge waste of a third level spell that could have done a lot more. So keep this in mind that when we look at cantrips, you want at least one decent damage dealing cantrip to always fall back to. The other thing with choosing your cantrips is it's really important to choose a cantrip that makes attack rolls. At higher levels of play, enemies have very high saving throw bonuses and have features like magic resistance as well, which means that cantrips that rely on a saving throw can actually be very difficult to land. For me, this means that I always want to make sure that I have a spell like Firebolt, Eldritch Blast, Chill Touch, or Ray of Frost in my arsenal. If you don't have Eldritch Blast, Firebolt is your best damage dealing cantrip. However, if we look at some of the other options, they actually will have something on top of the damage they do for a little bit more battlefield control or situational options, which can be a lot of fun. I love a spell like Toll the Dead, which does get up to that D12 against the damaged enemy. The problem that I found is that because it relies on a wisdom saving throw, by higher levels, wisdom saves are so good on many enemies that it's a real hit and miss spell. I love Firebolt, but Ray of Frost actually also slows down your enemies if it hits them, so it can be a really useful control spell as well. You may also be tempted to take spells like Frostbite, which cause disadvantage to the enemies, although this is where you start bridging away from damage dealing and more into those control effects. We've mentioned our favorite damage dealing spells in another video, which we will link here. But we're going to talk very loosely about some of the spells we think make the best choices for a Blaster Mage. And we're going to start with the bread and butter options. And this ranges a little bit around what level spells they are. But our favorite options for a Blaster Mage are things like Ice Knife, Lightning Bolt, Fireball, and Cone of Cold. These we seem to always fall back on and always come to as some of our favorites. Well, these are great standbys. I love the versatility and Swiss army knife nature of spells like Chromatic Orb, Thunderstep, and Synaptic Static. All of these spells are really, really versatile, either being able to change the damage type into non-standard damage types, or in the case of spells like Thunderstep and Synaptic Static, you get really good damage, but also a great other effect, like a debuff against your enemies, or being able to teleport away from a dangerous situation. These spells, along with the cantrips mentioned, are our favorite choices for direct damage against your enemies. You don't need to pick up all of them, but a good mix of area of effect and single target damage spells from this list will give you a really well-rounded and versatile way to deal with combat encounters. If you do get to very high levels of play, don't forget to pack Meteor Swarm, which is going to be the best damage dealing spell in the game. These direct damage dealing spells are going to be your bread and butter, but to play an excellent blaster, you want to make sure that you're leveraging one of your most important resources as a spellcaster, and that is your concentration. Spells that require concentration are a bit of an investment in battle because it might take a few rounds for them to come into their full effect, but when you layer them with your direct damage dealing spells, you can get some fantastic results. Funneling your enemies into the area of a cloud kill or a wall of fire and then pummeling them with fireballs is going to cause a lot more damage over several turns than if you just pummeled them with fireballs alone. Because once cloud kill and wall of fire are in effect, it doesn't require any action from you to continue to cause them to deal damage. There are also some spells out there that are actually excellent for damage dealing, but a lot of people don't consider them when imagining their Blaster Mage. People often associate the elemental damage with a Blaster Mage. But if we look at spells like Animate Objects or Bigby's Hand, these can offer some really cool ways to deal a lot of useful damage on the battlefield and also give you different tools and options outside of just damage. Bigby's Hand and Animate Objects put more creatures on the battlefield, creatures that you can command with your bonus action to make attacks which deal damage. 
This is where we kind of bridge the gap into battlefield control and summoning, but it is worth noting that these spells will let you rack up a lot of extra damage and should be considered as part of the arsenal of a well-rounded blaster mage. Now, we can't go without mentioning two other spells here that don't necessarily fall into a lot of the categories we talked about, and that is because they are specific for the cleric or a divine soul sorcerer. But if you look at spiritual weapons or spirit guardians, these are actually two of the best damage dealing spells in the game. So if you're creating a multi-class or you're playing a divine soul sorcerer, these should be considered as a valuable part of your arsenal. If you aren't a Divine Soul Sorcerer, but are at very high levels of play, you might be able to pick up a spell such as Crown of Stars, which functions very similarly to Spiritual Weapon in that it allows you to deal damage with your bonus action without using your concentration. It's just that for the non-Divine Souls out there, you gotta use a 7th level spell slot to access it. A 7th level spell slot that, me personally, I'd rather use that on Force Gauge. So using all of the tools that we've presented in this video, we hope that that makes it a little bit easier for you to create a really powerful blaster mage at your table. There's so much fun to be had with spell casters and the different spell options. And remember, these aren't the only spells you have to take. Keep in mind that a great blaster mage is going to utilize different things like battlefield control and maybe some charm spells or some different options that might really round them out to be useful in more than one way. But their main focus, if it's going to be blasting and blowing up enemies at the battlefield, there are a lot of great powerhouse spells and abilities to choose from. One of the biggest challenges of playing a blaster mage is managing your resources, both your class features and your spell slots. It is very easy to overcommit to a battle and start dropping down your biggest concentration spells and laying down fireball after fireball after fireball, when in reality you might have been able to win the battle with just one or two of those spells and then going back to using your more dependable cantrips. Unlike a fighter, barbarian, or rogue who is only one more weapon attack away from a whole bunch more damage, once you run out of your high level spell slots and are back to defaulting to cantrips, your damage potential really goes down quite a lot. So make sure that you take a measured approach to how you use your resources as a spellcaster and always be on the lookout for how you can th keep things more efficient. So this has been a look at how to play a Blaster Mage in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Don't forget to check out the links below for some of the characters that we've made. And if you have any Blaster Mages of your own, tell us about them in the comments below. The videos we created in our channel are made possible in part thanks to the generosity and support of our Patreon supporters. If you're enjoying our work, please consider checking us out on Patreon and becoming a part of our Discord community. Don't forget to check out our live play in the Worlds of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can find all the previous episodes right up over here. And we have plenty more class guides for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the dungeon.